What's going on YouTube? JT is born here and welcome back to another edition of After the Movie. I just got done watching The Exorcist Believer and I'm here to give my thoughts on that. That's right, The Exorcist Believer, the first film in a planned trilogy of Exorcist sequels by David Gordon Green. See, with Halloween, I can see what you can do to make a trilogy out of it and like do like different elements with that regards. But with an Exorcist movie, I'm not exactly sure where you could kind of go with it. I feel like we've kind of already seen like all we really needed to and I just I don't know but we'll see there they have to recoup that 400 million dollar investment yes apparently they spent 400 Universal spent like 400 million dollars for the rights to this franchise which is absolutely insane because pretty much none of the sequels have been profitable I don't know how you're going to see this money back and uh as any indication with this first movie I don't even know if you're going to get to all three films but hey you know what we'll see what kind of happens in that regards they're they're kind of like stuck they have to make these things now uh, with how much they invested, because otherwise it was like, wow, what a waste. But, uh, uh, yeah, so The Exorcist Believer, it is what the, uh, so we had Exorcist 1, 2, and 3, and then we had the two prequels. This is the sixth entry in the Exorcist franchise. Now, I'm not like this big mega Exorcist fanatic. I mean, I like the first movie. I think it's pretty good. Um, not one of my favorite fil horror films of all time. I do think it's, the hype for it is a little bit too high, but it is genuinely a good horror movie. Um, Exorcist 2, um, which I finally went around and watched the entire series because I hadn't actually watched all, like, the sequels and prequels I had. So, I actually sat down and watched them all, um, before the release of this new movie. First film, genuinely pretty good. Second film, really, really boring and really, really bad. Exorcist 3, actually not half bad. Um, it's kind of slow earlier on and sometimes, like, the way it's shot looks a little bit like a TV movie, but it's actually based on, uh, William Peter Blatty's books, uh, the book Legion, and the story is kind of interesting in some regards, and there's some creepy moments, and there's a really good performance from Brad Dourif in the film. So, Exorcist 3, you know, generally not half bad, and I think a lot of people have come around in the years to Exorcist 3. Um, so there's inter interesting stuff with that one. Uh, then you had the two prequels, because basically they shot a movie which ended up being Dominion Prequel The Exorcist, and that tested really poorly, so then they went back and remade the movie again with Exorcist The Beginning. Now, Exorcist The Beginning, I think, is a much worse movie, but it does have a more entertaining third act because it's so bad that I was laughing my ass off. Uh, but not a very good movie. Very, very bad. Uh, Dominion prequel to The Exorcist is a little bit better. It honestly felt a little bit like with the ending, kind of like Ghostbusters, but it's just really boring and very underwhelming uh, through it. So generally, like, this Exorcist series, like, the only ones really worth watching are the ones based on b the books uh, from William Peter Blatty, if you will. So... Yeah, I mean, it just, there's, like I said, just watch one and three. You're pretty much all you need to know. And now we have Exorcist of Believer, the first in a planned trilogy of Exorcist movies, because apparently David Gordon Green, after doing Halloween and that trilogy where each entry uh, kind of like got weaker and weaker as it went along, was like, ah, eh, we're going to do an Exorcist movie now and uh, make that into a trilogy. Like, I don't even like, but based on the way this thing ends, and this is a very like, I'm not going to get into spoilers just yet, but let me just say it is a real downer of an ending uh, with this thing. I'm like, that's it? Really? Like, ugh, like this doesn't make me really excited for any future movies. Um, unlike the 2018 Halloween film, which that started out pretty strong. There was a nice return to form. It's like, ah, oh, it's exactly what we needed. But this one? Mm, I don't know. Uh, it felt actually kind of worse than Halloween ends in some ways. But uh, there's nothing really overly... I guess kind of dumb like the Evil Dies Tonight stuff we saw in the David Gordon Green Halloween trilogy but I mean there's some very questionable things that kind of happen in this movie but let me go ahead and quickly talk about the plot so I guess you can tell by my indication I wasn't too big a fan of this one I definitely didn't hate it or think it's downright awful um there are good elements to it and like namely the performances of the actors uh involved but some of the story choices and bringing back the like like uh, Chris McKe McNeil um, you know, Reagan's mom, like Ellen Burstein, however you pronounce her name, uh, like bringing her back, like her appearance in it is genuinely downright, like just kind of like one of the worst uses of a legacy character I think I've ever seen in one of these things. Like, my goodness, like it just completely like didn't need her in the movie at all. Cause like they bring her, cause like we need an extra cause we need her for the trailer for the film because the exorcist is now 50 years, but my goodness, 50 years since The Exorcist, and also, can I just say, this is one of my favorite shots ever in a horror movie, I mean, like, that is just an absolutely incredible uh, shot there, but, so the storyline this time with The Exorcist Believer, it's focused on two girls who end up getting possessed, 
Uh, you have one father, like, and his daughter, like, Leslie Odom Jr., like, you get him and his daughter kind of get the, uh, his daughter Angela get the main focus of the story generally, and then the other girl and her family, like, they don't really get, like, much to do in this film, which, when they're forced to kind of make a choice, like, as to who lives or dies and just the stuff going on there, hmm, is it the character who's had more development or the character who hasn't? So, like, without getting to spoilers, I'll leave you, like, to guess what's going on there, or is that really what's going on there? I don't exactly know, because it's just, the ending is just such a downer, and so kind of underwhelming and weird, it's like, what are you going to do with this sequel? Um, and some of the things, the story choices that it kind of does, just kind of left me scratching my head, but I will get the positives out of the way, like I said, I think the acting all around is actually really quite good, um, the main actor, like, the, the first act actually is pretty solid, it's really when it kind of becomes an exorcist movie that, it just didn't really, like, pack the punches in terms of scares. It kind of felt like it dragged on. Um, I also felt that it, the its treatment, I guess, of, like, Catholicism and Christianity wasn't done in the best of lights. And I think that's going to probably leave a lot of people upset after seeing this. Because, like I said, um, even the way, like, um, uh, Chris McNeil uh, brings up, I'm going to like, Ellen Burstein's character from the first film brings up the facts like th this is an actual line of dialogue she talks about how she never actually witnessed the exorcist but she was kept out of the room for her safety mind you um but then her reasoning was like ah it's probably the patriarchy and i'm like wow what what a way to like talk about uh the two men who saved their life who sacrificed themselves to save your daughter um with that going on literally they died saving her i mean technically one of them kind of comes back in exorcist 3 but he still ultimately kind of dies in that but, uh, yeah, like I said, it felt, like, kind of very cynical, uh, even, like, when one of the priests, like, the, the, the priests in that are treated like an absolute joke in this movie, um, and, like I said, uh, despite the fact that in every Exorcist movie leading up to this, like, like, I mean, Father Marin did his part, and the other priests in other films, like, they were treated, like, more heroically, but I guess because of all the, uh, the scandals going on with the Catholic Church and all that's been going on in recent years, they don't want to paint them in the best of light but again this is an extras movie and you probably should showcase it a little bit better uh especially given the characters that were written by blatty and like what they did in those movies um but hey like i said this is uh, 2023 so we'll just have to just chalk it up to whatever's going on i don't exactly know like i said i just don't think they treated him the best but there are some interesting aspects and some ideas like that it kind of sets up like i like the aspect of having two girls possessed i think that makes it a little bit more interesting the possession stuff it just felt really kind of tame and like just kind of got a little bit weird but not quite exorcist to the heretic weird um and i will say like outright this is probably the third like i'd rank this movie third overall in the exorcist franchise it's a lot better than the two prequels and exorcist 2 the heretic but it's not something i'd really like kind of want to go back and rewatch. i mean this ending in particular is such an absolute downer there is no enthusiasm really for me for like the next entry in this thing because it just felt like kind of weird and like what are you doing um and speaking of things like questioning like what are you doing chris mcneil like her entire inclusion in this movie uh just feels like she's just there for the trailer and to kind of help sell the film um because well like linda blair's not really showcased in the marketing and that she may or may not be in this movie like for a brief cameo which i'm not giving away just yet but chris mcneil like my goodness the treatment of her character and inclusion in this movie um so like i said when the girls are possessed they, they go out disappearing for a few days and um, the stuff with the father and, like, the stuff with, um, Leslie Oden Jr.'s character and his daughter Angela, uh, and the way it kind of calls, like, the things are tied into, like, the tragedy of what happened with his wife and, like, how his daughter kind of came to be and how that's all kind of linked together. I thought that stuff was kind was pretty good for the most part. Like I said, it's well acted, it's well shot. Um, the opening takes place in Haiti, and it's kind of a surprising one. I wasn't really expecting, uh, what they were going with in that direction with it, but, um, Alas, there it was, and like I said, the first part where it's the missing girls and we're kind of coming back, and that that stuff is all kind of neat, but it's just the actual exorcism, and that felt kind of dull. Uh, I've seen exorcism done, like, plenty of times in other movies. I feel like the Conjuring movies have done this, like, like way more entertaining. Like, this one felt really kind of tame, and um, like I said, the way it kind of ends, it felt really like a bit of a downer, and just felt a little cynical in some ways. Like I said, there's still the warmth of family, but... I mean, let's say, like, one character, like, gets, 
I, hmm, I don't know. You know what? I got to get into spoilers for this thing to kind of discuss things. But I should say, like, overall, uh, this is kind of a mix to kind of, like, negative review, per se. Like, I don't hate this movie. I don't think it's downright awful. Um, and there are good elements to it. Like I said, the acting and, you know, that's pretty much in some of the ideas it has. But it's not fleshed out as well enough. Um, once one of the girls and her father kind of get the majority of the, the screen time and, like, the dedication, like, with their story arcs and all that. And then the other half kind of gets the shaft and they're not really showcased in the best of lights. Um, and, the and bringing back a legacy character to kind of sell this thing, I think it was just downright just, like, terrible uh, with her use in the movie. But, hey... It's just me. Maybe some people like it, but actually, you know what? I can't see really anybody liking uh, Chris McNeil's character like treatment within this movie. Um, it's almost like worse in some ways than what they did with the uh, what was it the recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, where they were just trying to replicate Halloween. I don't know. I feel like legacy characters in so many of these sequels nowadays have not been getting the best of treatments. The only one I can think of that was handled well was Maverick and Top Gun Maverick. Literally, everyone else is just not very good the way things are handled for the most part. I mean, Lawrence Stroh wasn't half bad, um, mostly due to Jamie Lee Curtis and, you know, what they did with that trilogy. Like, there's some good stuff in there, too. Although I still prefer the Lori and, like, H2O over, like, Lori and Halloween 2018. But that's my own personal preference. But anyways, I'm getting off track. I'm going to get into full spoilers for this thing. Do I recommend you see it? I mean, it's it's all right. I mean, maybe just wait for streaming if you really want to check it out. I don't think it's necessarily one to kind of rush to go out to see in the theaters. Um, like I said, there's some questionable story choices and the ending is such an absolute downer that I just kind of left scratching my head because like, you know, you had kind of a good setup in the first act and then I was like, you know, this isn't half bad. I don't know what everyone's complaining about. Then we get to the third act. I'm like, oh, that's where the problem starts to <laughs> take place. Um, but anyway, so full spoilers on this point, like I got to get into it because there's some things I want to discuss. So the first questionable thing, uh, the really questionable thing that happens in this thing um chris mcneil's character and her treatment of the story so if you've seen the trailer she's brought in because they need an expert on possessions even though she's t claimed she wasn't there although she's seen reagan like do some of the crazy stuff and you know the priests sacrifice themselves to save her even though she complains about not being able to see it due to the patriarchy which just left me audibly groaning in the theater i don't know why she needed to say that but hey you know what it's it's just nonsense um so anyways um what what her, she wrote a book and Reagan kind of left her for it like like she kind of like kept it to herself and like 10 years later she wrote a book about the experience and she had like a falling out with her daughter Reagan and so Reagan just kind of went off into hiding or whatever so she's been trying to find her but it's not been able to so that's some questionable stuff right there uh okay because like I said we got to have the legacy character jaded from their family or something like that because that's apparently the only story arc we can really see um god this is another reason i like talk about maverick so much just like because maverick is still maverick and cool and all that stuff i mean there's some drama there but it's really good stuff um but anyway so she goes off and she's brought into like i know the girls know who i am uh we know i'm coming like she's like this grand expert who studied all this stuff and she's barely in the movie by you she shows up and immediately she gets stabbed repeatedly in her eyes and she's just like immediately like goes blind so she can't see anymore and she's like bedridden immediately what a way to bring her back like it almost felt like a like a kind of joke if you will like oh hey i'm gonna come in here because you need an expert she shows up like an hour into the movie and it's like the big hype moment oh yeah the classic legacy character's back and she like almost immediately gets stabbed and just put in the hospital and the end of the movie she does reunite with reagan if you will but it feels so unearned and kind of tacked on um at the end i was like are they gonna bring in linda blair okay there you go so she felt kind of useless in this thing uh just She's just kind of there to give advice and all that. But uh, so you got that going on there. And then, of course, you have all these different like, I mean, there's a bunch of different like religious groups in this thing going on about this thing. Like you had like their next door, like the next door neighbor. She says how she almost went to become a nun and then she got pregnant and she like aborted the baby. And then she's like gets tasked with reading like the, the exorcism rites or whatever, because the Catholic Church is like, uh, no, we can't help with this thing, and, uh, you're kind of screwed and you're on your own, even though, like, the priests have talked about possession and all that, and they're just too scared to act on anything. Like I said, the treatment of them in this movie is an absolute kind of joke, and then the one priest is like, well, here you go, lady, who almost became a nun, but you kind of left, uh, you kind of take care of this stuff. I'm gonna go hide in my car for most of it. I'm like, wow, well, that's really dumb. Uh, eventually, he gets the courage to kind of go in, and then immediately his neck is, like, snapped and twisted, so I was just like, 
wow, like that's a lot of ridiculousness. Um, so the way they kind of work out how like the, the movie sort of ends and like this is the part where it felt like an absolute downer. Like, wow, this is how you're ending your movie. Um, but basically, the two girls, like, they're kind of forced with a choice. Like, you have to choose who lives and who dies. Uh, the one father is trying to, like, because all the religious, there's all these different, like, religious groups kind of coming in, trying to do their own thing, like, and all that to try and, like, it's all about, like, people and unity. Like, that's kind of one of the themes of it, just kind of coming together to stop this stuff. Um, because, like I said, the Catholic Church or whatever refused to come in and send somebody uh, to help perform an exorcism because, like I said, they're not painting in the best of light within this movie. Um, so even though, like, within the first film, like I said, the two priests helped save the day, but I guess we can't have that in this movie. You know, I'll give the Conjuring series this. At least you have, like, those characters treated a little bit more, with a little bit more dignity um, than, you know, you are in this film. So, like I said, props up, props to The Conjuring. Like I said, um, even, like, and Lorraine Warren, like, they're religious, but they're still, like, portrayed in the films as like good people like working to help others and there's still a sense of warmth and like humanity to it all um and there's like a hopefulness to it this movie's ending is such an absolute downer so for whatever shenanigans they're kind of forced to give a choice like the, the other family members like we can't choose like who we're going to choose and then um as things start to get worse for the two girls one of the uh the dad's like i choose you uh, daughter um and it's not the the Leslie Odom Jr.'s characters, like whatever the other daughter's name, um, the the Caucasian girl, um, like he's one of the dads says chooses her. He's like no, and then they kind of go into this thing where one of them seemingly like lives, and you think it's the one girl, but then it's the. I mean, as I was watching, I'm like, it's gonna be the girl who's had more of the development, the storyline focused on her, because like why would they kind of go in the other direction? But anyway, so for whatever reason, the one girl is completely like she survives the the exorcism, and the other girl just downright dies. Like she's like you kind of see her like um this little like like her own personal health thing she's like she's screaming for her parents and all that like she's not all there and then she just gets kind of dragged under and then she just dies um i guess she's just dead unless they're like hiding her body somewhere or whatever but yeah so like one girl lives the other one dies and then they kind of like the one father is embracing his daughter and i'm like i don't know this feels like a real downer of an ending like it just felt kind of like jaded and there's no real like i, I didn't feel hopefulness to it like at all and it didn't really like leave on a bit of a cliffhanger like say something like halloween kills where that's a clear cliffhanger with what they were doing with that one and like the way michael's kind of there at the end of the movie but here you don't really like get that at all it just feels like oh we're uh we're just kind of we're like reagan reunites with her mom after she kind of left because her mom got stabbed in the eyes repeatedly for that one little scene i was like oh hi linda blair nice to see you back after like 40 years nearly um with exorcist 2 the heretic um, but yeah, like I said, this one, it, it was such a downer of an ending. Uh, and <clears throat> I, like I said, some, some aspects, the way characters are kind of written and portrayed just felt a little bit off to me. Like I said, Chris McNeil's entire inclusion in this film, uh, the character, I, I keep wanting to say like the actress, but like the character of Chris McNeil, Reagan's mom, her inclusion just felt like an absolute waste. Um, I don't think this is a movie, like if you, the way it kind of like, handles like the christianity angle to it is done very well um and again like there's other religions involved i'm i'm well aware of that and they're trying to like give the idea like okay like every like religion has their own way to deal with possession so i understood that thing but like the way things were kind of wrapped up i don't know it just felt like a bit of a downer and just not really all that pleasant like even like the, the, it really lacked scares it lacked the tension of like some other like horror films that have done possessions and all that like for example like conjuring 2 like i bring that movie up uh a few times like that's an example i think of a really good exorcism like that takes place in the film like suspenseful like you feel the warmth to it all and it kind of has those like moments where you like those kind of feel good moments sprinkled in throughout it and I think it just makes the ending all that more like impactful if you will and like I said you have the more intense exorcism scenes you have better scares here you don't really get that at all and I'm kind of disappointed in that regards because like I said I wanted a little bit more from this movie but as I said it's not the absolute worst I think overall it's just kind of an all right to kind of like the ending really kind of took me out of it because I was with it within the first like act in it but like this is nearly a two-hour movie and it just uh, it just kind of missed the mark for me unfortunately but hey it is what it is i suppose but anyways if you've seen exorcist believer if you have any thoughts on the other exorcist movies let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below uh, be sure to like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for more content the bell for notifications all the other fun stuff 
I think that's it in terms of after the movies for this week, unless I see something tomorrow, but I don't know. It just, eh, come on, Exorcist believer. Like, I want a really good Exorcist sequel. I know some people are like, well, go to Exorcist 3, but like, I mean, like I said, that movie I didn't love, but it's not, it's actually pretty decent, but I want an Exorcist movie that I absolutely love in terms of sequels. I mean, they've got... I mean, it's kind of like going the op. Maybe this will be the opposite of his Hall David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy, where each entry will be a lot better than the previous one. But I don't know. Like, if this is your first like movie right out the gate. I don't think I don't know if we're even going to get these other movies. Like, well, it depends on how financially well this thing does. But then again, they spent four hundred million dollars, so they're going to have to make some movies um, on this stuff. So I don't know. Um, it's like I said, next to kind of like negative overall. Um, I, I, I didn't think it was half bad earlier on, but I think the ending and I think the treatment of like one of the legacy characters is going to throw a lot of people off. Um, there's some neat ideas in here and it's not a terrible movie by any stretch of the means, but it could have been a lot better. So yeah, I'm still rambling incoherently. So I apologize for that. Uh, but there you go. There's my thoughts on the exorcist believer. What did you think of it? I'll, uh, talk to you all later, I suppose. Uh, happy October.